Next presenter here today is Oskar Bosson, here to present BioArctic. The floor is yours, Oskar. Thank you so much, and really great to be here again uh, at the Life Science Summit, Life Spring <laughs> Summit, I should say. So, uh, BioArctic is listed on the Stockholm Stock Exchange, large cap, and this is our disclaimer. So, what's BioArctic? Well, BioArctic was founded 20 years ago by Professor Lars Lanfeldt and his uh, friend Per Jellefors. And they had an idea of how to treat Alzheimer's disease. As you know, Alzheimer's disease is a very, very difficult disease to treat. And there's been many failures in the past decades in this disease. But they had an idea and they formed a company. And what's happened since then is that we've grown to a company not only focused on Alzheimer's disease, but as I will show in the following slide, also other neurodegenerative disorders. That is disorders that break down the brain over time. And we do this uh, from an office and labs based in Stockholm. We're close to 90 people now, growing quite quickly. Most of them are scientists working in the labs all day to de develop new therapies. Um, but we also are now building a, a commercial organization uh, to be able to commercialize our first product that we hope will be uh, available soon in the US. It actually is under an accelerated approval, but soon also in Europe, Japan, and other parts of the world. And we'll come back to that later on. But we hope to do this to help these huge, huge patient groups who have an enormous need and where there are very limited treatment options today. So let me go in and show you a bit more of our pipeline. So this is our full pipeline. As you see, we're not a one trick pony. We have several different projects, not only in Alzheimer's disease, but also in Parkinson's disease, in ALS, in Gaucher's disease, which uh, is an enzyme replacement therapy. And we also have a project called BT, or Brain Transported Technology. And let me go through this project a, a, a bit by bit. So in Alzheimer's disease, our foremost candidate is called Lecanemab, or also Lecembi, uh, uh, which is the US brand name it's received after an accelerated approval earlier this year. That project and the backup project to that is partnered together with a company called ASI. ASI is a Japanese global pharmaceutical company who has a long history within Alzheimer's disease and oncology. And we've been partners with them for almost 20 years, 18 years, and, and still going strong, both with research projects, but also with this specific antibody project. We also have uh, other projects within Alzheimer's disease because we think in the end, patient, patients are gonna need different types of treatments uh, and there's a vast need. So combination treatments will also be important for the future to be able to solve the riddle of Alzheimer's disease. And therefore we are continuing to invest and research within Alzheimer's disease. These projects are both uh, naked antibody projects and also linked with our brain transporter technology, which is a te technology to help uh, antibodies or other proteins come over the blood-brain barrier uh, in the brain to be able to be more effective and possibly also safer. Um, we also have a, a portfolio within Parkinson's disease, uh, one project that's already been in phase one and is phase two ready. Uh, that project was previously partnered together with uh, Abvi, a big US company, but they handed it back to us last year for strategic reasons in their portfolio. And we're now uh, looking into different options, either finding another partner to bring that project forward or investing in ourselves to increase the value before we find another partner. That would be then bringing it into phase two by ourselves. Uh, in that portfolio, we also have just a new project with our BT technology uh, to improve safety and efficacy. Thirdly, uh, in other neurodegenerative disorders, we have an ALS project. ALS, as you will know, is a not a, a big amount of people get it every year, but it's a devastating disease for those who do. Uh, it slowly breaks down the body's muscle function, and in the end, many people die of suffocation. So we want to help these people, obviously, and we have a project that's moving very quickly forward based on the learnings we have, both from the Alzheimer's disease projects we have and the Parkinson's disease projects we have. Um, and it's going to be very interesting to see how that project moves forward. And then fourthly, we have the Gaucher's disease project, which is a disease where there are actually quite good treatments today. It's, uh, you, need, you lack an enzyme in the body, so you need an enzyme replacement therapy. But those therapies cannot cross the blood-brain barrier, and therefore the uh, symptoms that you get from that disease that are linked to your brain cannot be treated, and they can be severe and, and, and deadly sometimes. So we're now trying to use 
already available enzyme replacement therapies and put them together with our brain transporter technology to be able to bring them across the blood-brain barrier and hopefully help these people. And then uh, lastly, but not least, the brain transporter, which I now mentioned a number of times, is a totally new way of, of bringing in different proteins or biologics across the blood-brain barrier to help to get more treatment into the brain for these devastating diseases. As you might know, the blood-brain barrier is there to protect the brain from uh, poisons or, or uh, dangerous things to get into the brain and harm the brain, but it also makes it difficult for treatments to cross the blood-brain barrier. And that's what we're trying to do here. And hopefully that will, within all these areas, help the efficacy and possibly also the safety of, of the drugs that we're developing. And that is a project that we're very proud of, and we think actually that might be the next big thing for BioArctic. Okay, so look, let's look a bit at our partner, ASI, which we've been partnering with since 2005. And in 2007, they took a license on lecanemab. And so far, we've received close to 100 million. We still have a, a roughly 100 million euros still to be received in milestone payment as this project uh, progresses forward. The last milestone payments came in in Q1 this year, approximately 35 million euros, and that was based on an approval in the US, but also the submissions in Japan and Europe. Uh, and the, the milestones that we still uh, look forward to receiving is when we get an approval in, in Europe, we get an approval in Japan, and then also different sales and marketing milestones as this product hopefully reaches pa patients and gets sold on the market. We're very, very, very proud of the collaboration with ASIM. We think they're a great partner who's really, really uh, has, a, has a great focus on the patients just like we have. So one of the questions that we get when looking at lecanemab, you might know that lecanemab came in with positive phase three results in September, late September last year. And, and the results were astonishing across the board on the primary endpoint and all secondary endpoints in the phase three study we had very high statistical significant results of slowing down the disease and helping the patients to keep more of their brain safe for a longer period of time than they would without treatment. And the actual number of the, on the primary endpoint was that we, we reduced clinical decline by 27%. And some might say 27% is not a lot. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means uh, looking at a modeling study that was published earlier this year, that a patient, if you start dosing these patients early on in their disease, uh, even before they're, they're in Alzheimer's disease, when they have the preface, which is called mild cognitive impairment, you can save up to three years of that patient and keep them in the early stages of the, their, disease, their disease, where they can still take care of themselves, be at home, remember their loved ones, and function quite well by themselves. And we think three years is quite an effort, as it, this is the first uh, uh, disease-modifying treatment within Alzheimer's disease that uh, uh, could ever get full approval across the board, uh, across the globe. So, and we're hoping that that's going to happen. And how is that going to happen? Well, this is currently what we think about the different regions where we've handed in, uh, or actually our partner, ASI, have handed in submissions. So in the US, we got an accelerated approval based on the phase two results already in January this year. So the product is available in the US but it's, it, there's a limited availability because there's still not reimbursement from Medicare, Medicaid or CMS. So the, the, the authority that uh, makes sure that the people on Medicare and Medicaid, which is approximately 85% of the population that has Alzheimer's disease, and they have said that they will give a broader reimbursement once there is a full approval in the US. And that is something that we hope will happen later this year, already in July, on July 6th, the FDA has said that they will come back with a reply if this product will be approved or not. And before that, on 9th of June, their advisory committee will discuss lecanemab and give a recommendation to the F of approval or not. And we're really looking forward to that. And we have good hopes uh, for a good uh, outcome there. In Japan, uh, uh, there were, the product was submitted for approval in January. And there the process is on ongoing. And our partner ASI has said that they hope for an approval in Q3 this year. In Europe, also submitted in January this year, and there the process is a bit longer, uh, and uh, we expect uh, a potential approval to come uh, in the first quarter of next year. 
in China. The process is already ongoing, although the full application in China cannot be sent in until later this year when the Chinese part of the global phase three study is com uh, completed. But they've already now submitted the data that is available. And also there, we hope for a potential approval already in first quarter next year. And that would mean that we're the first fully approved disease modifying treatment in Alzheimer's disease globally ever which we hope and are looking forward to, and obviously would mean a lot to us as a company. So I just want to show this also to say that the project doesn't end just because you finalize the phase three study, because the phase three study actually also continues in a, a open label extension, where almost all of the patients that were part and fulfilled the phase three study, uh, up to 95% or so, have now continued into the open label extension study, where all get cannabis as a treatment and they will be followed up going several years now by a sign additional data will be presented from these studies uh, in the years and, and congresses to come and we're looking forward to that and also in addition we're not only looking at early alzheimer's disease which is where this phase three study was uh, made but ASI is actually also looking at what happens if you find patients already before they develop symptoms because Alzheimer's disease is a, is a disease that develops over maybe 20 years before you actually get symptoms. And what if you find patients and treat them before the symptoms arise? Could you push the disease even further out? And that's what we're looking into in the AHEAD study. And we're looking forward to getting results there in the years to come as well. And then a question that we always get is, how much could, what could this mean for us as a company? Well, there's a huge population around the world that needs disease-modifying treatments for Alzheimer's disease. And ASI presented a, a couple of months ago a, 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 these, this graph on, on this slide that state that they think in three years from now, or in 10 years from now, approximately 3 million people will be treated with treatments such as lecanemab, and that a majority of that would be lecanemab. And they expected then that that would be around one, uh, 10 billion US uh, dollars globally in revenues. And for us, with the high single digit royalties that we expect to get from ASI, that could mean that this could be a blockbuster drug for Bioarctic. And a blockbuster drug, that's a drug where you earn more than $1 billion per year. So that's our hope. And, and or we're really looking forward to that. That would be the case, because obviously that goes right down to our bottom line as we have no costs for development or marketing, et cetera. And then finally, looking forward, what we're looking forward to this year, most of it I've already said, there are a couple of Congresses coming up, AAIC, CTAD, ADPD, which are the most important Congresses, always new data coming out then, but also the approvals that I already mentioned, first in US, then in Japan, then in Europe and China. So with that, really great to be here. And we like to say that Bioarctic, we really keep patients in mind. We're great science behind our projects. We're uh, and we have great people that do them with, based on great science. So thank you so much. Thank you for that presentation, Oscar. You touched upon the first question I have. Uh, this summer, you will get the information from FDA, whether your drug, uh, whether your Alzheimer's drug will uh, receive full approval uh, from the FDA or not. Uh, what will their deci decision mean for the company? Well, as I said, it would be, you know, it'd be a historic, not to say the least for patients, I think, because it would be the first time that patients would be able to get broad uh, access to disease modifying treatment in a, a disease that affects millions of people, but where there's nothing today. So that's the first thing. But then obviously for Bioarctic, it would mean that we would start getting royalties, firstly in the US, but then hopefully in other countries as well for this uh, uh, product. And that could mean a lot for the company because uh, you know these money we can invest in other parts of our portfolio uh, and really grow the company. Our, our founder, their vision, our founders, their vision is that Bioarctic will become the next big Swedish pharmaceutical company. And, and you know to do that, we need to invest, we need to grow. But I think in the end, it will also mean that we'll be able to give something back to our shareholders. Your drug costs quite a lot um, per patient in the US. Um, will the public uh, healthcare in Europe be able to afford the drug? I, I think it's difficult to discuss the price in Europe uh, un until there is an approval and a price is set. And also it's our partner ASI who has uh, global rights who set the price. 
I, I should say about the way that ASI did set the price in the US, I think is a, it, it, they did it in a very good way because they've been totally transparent. They've shown all the things that they made, um, that they put in to the, the formula to the sort of calculate the, the, what the price should be. Uh, and I think the actual price that they, that they thought would be reasonable was about uh, $37,000 a year. Uh, but they put the price much, much lower than that because they also have this ambition that everybody who has uh, this uh, this uh, disease and could, you know, benefit from the cannabis should also get access to the treatment. And that's something I really support. So, but too early to talk about Europe until there is an approval. When it comes to Alzheimer's, uh, a challenge is to uh, diagnose, like you said in the presentation here, uh, and di diagnose and early to start the treatment. Uh, how do you see this challenge? I think actually there's a lot happening in the field right now. So not only, I mean, we're a Swedish company and, and we're basically in the, in the lead globally when it comes to Alzheimer's disease together with our partner ASI. But the, the great thing is that Sweden is also in the lead when it comes to blood biomarkers, for example, which is a totally new way of, of diagnosing people where you actually, uh, within just a couple of years, you'll be able in clinical practice to take a blood sample of a patient uh, and and uh, diagnose that patient to see if it has Alzheimer's disease or not, or if it has the prefaces of Alzheimer's disease or not. And I think that combination that's happening now with us and, and uh, other also uh, uh, coming with potential drugs to the market in combination with these blood biomarkers is going to be really, really interesting because you're going to be able to find patients early. And, and we believe that finding them early is the key to also giving them a better opportunity of benefiting from these drugs that are coming. So, you know, right now there's a lot happening in, in the field and we're really looking forward to being part of this development. Thank you for coming here today and presenting BioArtic. Thank you.